the basic logic of Ricardian equivalence. But before I talk about Ricardian equivalence, I want to discuss, first of all, the traditional view of government debt. And then you will understand that the Ricardian view of government debt is completely opposite to that. So we have been talking about the government debt since last two or three classes, right? We said this, that initially government was running the balanced budget. And then government suddenly decides to reduce taxes. It means that government is raising debt, assuming that the government expenditure, it remains same. When government is raising debt, now it will have to repay that debt. That's what we have seen. Not only it, it will have to repay that debt, it will also have to pay interest on that debt. That is also we have seen. Achha, when government is raising debt through the cut in taxes, that's what we have done. Government is raising debt through cut in taxes. What is the thing which government is expecting that this cut in taxes will do in the economy? The traditional view. Traditional view. Government has reduced taxes. Yes. When government has reduced taxes, uh, the government's expectation is that the people will have more income left with them and people will be consuming more by spending more. Right. So this is going to increase disposable income. This is going to increase consumer spending. It is going to increase the consumer spending and consumer spending is going to affect the economy both in the long run and in the short run. When consumer spending is going to increase, then the demand for goods and services will increase. Yes. Hmm. When demand for goods and services will increase, firms will produce more in goods, more goods and services. Production will increase. Employment will increase. Yes. Very good. Production and employment is increasing. So all of this has been achieved through fall in taxes. Okay. By people are spending more means people are consuming more of their income. Yes. When consumption is more, so savings are less. Yes. It means that the funds which could have been deposited as savings in the bank, that is getting reduced. Yes. When supply of savings in the economy will fall, what is going to happen to the interest rate? It will increase. Right. So supply of savings because people are spending more, people are consuming more. So when they are consuming more, they are, they are saving less. Supply of savings is reducing. When supply of savings will, will reduce, what is the, uh, uh, so I hope you must have done this in the intermediate macro course. You have this supply of funds, supply of loanable funds and demand for loanable funds on the x-axis and on the y-axis, you have the interest rate. So when savings, the supply of savings is going to fall, interest rate is going to increase. Interest rate is going to increase. But think about it like this. Now, there are loanable funds. Loanable funds are the funds which could be loaned. Supposedly, I was the saver earlier. If I had those savings, I would be depositing them in the bank. Now I have less savings. I am depositing less in the banks. 
so the banks would also naturally give less to the people who need funds who are the people who are needing funds those are the borrowers why are they needing funds for investment so the government so the banks are telling these investors boss we also don't have much savings with us so savings are expensive now means the interest rate has risen and with an increase in interest rate these investors will feel boss cost of borrowing has increased when cost of borrowing has increased investment is going to fall investment is going to fall right but when rate of interest is higher in the open economy what is going to happen if indian rate of interest is going to be higher then this higher indian rate of interest is going to attract the foreign capital into my country that is there so so this is not exactly from investment uh, like this i should you rather say rate, higher rate of interest is going to do this and higher capital inflow hmm? higher capital inflow when capital inflow is going to be higher in my country means the value of my domestic currency is going to increase because people want to invest in my country they would need my currency so demand for indian currency is going to increase when demand for indian currency is going to increase value of indian currency is going to increase when value of indian currency is going to increase indian currency is going to get appreciated right so indian currency appreciates when indian currency becomes uh, more valuable it means that indian goods and services will become expensive in the global market uh, so they will become less competitive in the global market indian goods and services will become less competitive in world markets in world markets right uh, so this is all is happening in the short run in the long run something could happen what is that in the long run what is going to happen in the long run when the of course when your supply of savings are less so even the national savings is also going to be less uh, so when national savings is going to be reduced the capital stock itself is going to be reduced because the investment is also lesser right and if the capital stock is 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 less then you would need more debt right so in the long run the smaller national saving caused by the tax cut would mean <clears throat> would mean co smaller capital stock
and greater foreign debt. And greater foreign debt. <clears throat> hmm. Right. So the output of the nation is going to be smaller and more and more output is going to be uh, uh, owed to the foreigners. That's the traditional view. So on the one hand, in the short run, you have the higher employment, higher output, but it is, since the output is also going to be lower in the long run, then prices are also going to increase. So the inflation is also going to be higher, right? And uh, future generations would have to bear the cost of the burden or the burden of the debt which you are taking up. That is also true, right? That is also true. This is the traditional view of the government debt. Then you have the Ricardian view of the government debt. Traditional view was this. And then you have the opposite view because traditional view says that uh, it is expecting that uh, people are going to respond to the lower taxes in form of the higher consumption in form of the higher spending, right? There is an alternative view. That is the Ricardian view. Now, what does Ricardian view says? Ricardian view says that the, the consumers, they are forward looking. They are looking in future. And when they are basing their decisions, their consumption decisions, they are not just looking at the transitory income. They are also looking at the permanent changes in the income. When they are making their consumption decision, when they are making the decision that whether to actually change their consumption or not, they are trying to see whether this change in income which has happened, is this only a one-time thing or my income has permanently increased or not? Because these consumers are very intelligent. They understand this. Government has reduced taxes today. In order to reduce this deficit, government will have to repay this deficit tomorrow. Government will be increasing taxes tomorrow. So it is just a matter of time. So please write this. Ricardian view. Ricardian view. So according to Ricardian view, according to Ricardian view, consumers Consumers are forward looking. And therefore, base their spending decisions is their spending decision. <clears throat> not only on the current income, but also on the future income. Not only on their current income, but also on their
expected future income right expected future income so the forward looking consumer understand that the government borrowing today i mean government is reducing taxes today it means government is raising debt today it only means that the government is going to raise taxes tomorrow because from where the government is going to give the money then so a tax cut financed uh, government debt it doesn't mean that uh, the tax burden is reduced it is just that Uh, government is sort of rescheduling the tax burden so instead of putting the tax burden today government is going to put the tax burden on the future generations that is it so when forward looking consumer understands this that instead of paying taxes today i'm going to pay higher taxes tomorrow ultimately i have to pay more taxes then why to change my spending decisions so the forward looking consumer is not going to change his consumption spending when the government is going to reduce taxes this is the simplest view right so the forward looking consumer understands that the government borrowing today means higher taxes in future Hmm. means higher taxes in future so if there is a tax cut and this tax cut is financing the government the tax cut is financed by the government debt uh, then government is doing nothing government is just rescheduling the tax burden so instead of putting the burden today it is putting the burden in future so the forward looking consumer is not going to change his consumption pattern so a tax cut financed by government debt does not reduce the tax burden but merely reschedules it so since <coughs> since um this is what the view this is uh, the thing that uh, it is not that the tax burden is reduced instead of paying it tomorrow you are paying the higher taxes sorry instead of paying it today you are paying the higher taxes tomorrow so this should not encourage the forward looking consumer to change his consumption spending patterns so it therefore should not encourage the forward looking consumer to 
change <clears throat> his consumption patterns or his consumption spending. So the general principle is that the government debt is equivalent to the future taxes. So if government is raising debt today by the tax cut. It is going to be equivalent of the future taxes, right? And uh, if consumers are sufficiently forward-looking, then future taxes are equivalent to the current taxes. So, so uh, financing the government debt is equivalent to financing it by the taxes, and this is what the view of this is this view is called the Ricardian equivalence. So I'll have to uh, uh, speak more about it. So this is just an introduction to what Ricardian equivalence is. So I'll take uh, the deeper view than this. I mean, I'll be, I'll be talking in, in uh, for a deeper analysis than this tomorrow, right? Chaliye. Thank you, Vita.